What's happening everybody? Welcome back. So if you saw my last video talking about why we chose to build out a uh, cargo trailer into a tiny home, you will uh, be a step ahead. This video is just me going around the thing, rambling, talking about all the different aspects of it. And uh, so if you're thinking about building out a cargo trailer, you'll be a step ahead of the game and kind of know what you're getting into. So uh, yeah, uh, let's just walk around this thing and ramble on. So the first thing is the uh, wall skins. They come in different thicknesses. This is the zero point or point zero three zero. It's the thicker stuff, it's the better stuff. Uh, I would definitely try to get the thicker stuff. You get what you pay for with these things, though, so you know, get a, get a nice one up front. You'll thank yourself later. The walls themselves come in two different styles. There's this kind with the bolts and they're just sealed with uh, silicone, which is not gonna last. I'm actually, before we build this thing out, I'm gonna take all these panels off and reseal it with something, probably uh, lap sealant. I don't know, I've got a lot of research to do to figure out what the best uh, glue is. I want something that's very strong, but also flexible. Um, but you can also get them as what looks like at least uh, a one piece aluminum thing and there's no screws. It's held on with VHB tape. But uh, that I, I think that would be extremely hard to remove if you did get damage, if a tree hit the side of it or something. So I'm not, I didn't wanna go that route. This seemed a little easier to repair. Uh, you can get diamond plate down here. Definitely recommend that. Rocks are going to kick up and hit you there. They come in this uh, kind of slightly rounded front with a rounded roof or a V-nose with a flat roof. On these particular trailers, they give a lifetime warranty on the rounded roofs because when it rains and snows, it just goes right off the side rather than pooling up in the, uh, in the middle. The aluminums, even though this is the thicker stuff, it's pretty thin. Like, look at that. You can... You can push it right through. So imagine on top, all that water weight sitting on there, it's just gonna push it in and then work its way into the seams eventually. So that was, uh, that's why we went this route. Plus we get a bunch of room up here, you know, we could store probably three propane things right here and a little toolbox maybe too. So that's pretty much that. As far as the axles go, there's two different types of axles you can get. These are just the, uh, the regular, I don't know, I guess straight axles and uh, they're cheaper. They're cheaper to get parts for, they're easier to replace, but there's also torsion axles, which are better in other ways, but they're more expensive and harder to replace. So I didn't, this one just came with them and we liked this dealer, so we went with these. If they had the, tor if I had the choice between the torsion axles and these ones, torsion axles last longer. They're supposed to be, I think, stronger and they handle better, but they're harder to replace. And I want something that's super simple to replace and work on. Simplicity is key with this thing, so. I'm kind of glad we got these ones. It's got self-adjusting brakes. You can get trailers with non-self-adjusting brakes, but you can replace them with the self-adjusting uh, insides. And I would definitely recommend that because it would suck to have to go down here every thousand miles or 2000 miles, whatever it is, and have to replace them. This one's also got these little rubber boots that you just pop off. And I'm not gonna do it because they're kind of a pain to put back on, but there's a little nipple under there and you can grease up your, uh, your hubs. That's really nice. Some of them don't come with that and you have to uh, remove the hub to uh, repack it with grease fairly often. And uh, I imagine most people would probably slack on that and your bearings aren't gonna last as long. You have to replace them more often. Also, also came with radial tires. A lot of them just come with cheap bias ply tires. Definitely get radials. You don't wanna have a blowout. And uh, we went with the uh, dual axles for two reasons. Well, actually three. One is it holds twice as much weight. So we can really build this thing out and put some weight in it, no problem. The next one is if we had a blowout or a flat, we've still got another tire on this side to allow us to pull over to the side of the road safely and replace the, uh, replace the wheel where if we just had a single axle, if we have a blowout, it's gonna be an emergency situation. So that's, uh, that's a thing there. And we also got these, uh, this breakaway brake system right here. There's a little battery in here that powers it. It's got electric brakes on all, all four wheels, which the single axles did not come with and we really wanted that as well. So this, if for some reason this disconnects from the trailer, uh, it'll pull this pin out and it'll engage the brakes and that will keep the trailer from hitting the front of this. Hopefully these safety chains will do their job and hold it and then the trailer won't hit the front of the van and we can slowly slow down and uh, avoid any damage to the trailer or the van in any emergency situations. Hopefully those, uh, those chains hold. They should, they're pretty, pretty heavy duty. So that's, uh, that's pretty much that. It also, you know, this one came with the LED package. It's got LED lights all over the place, which are very bright and they'll last a long time. And we got the ramp door on this one uh, cause we got motorcycles. I'm actually getting ready to go to work right now. Uh, so we just unload the bikes and go and uh, do a bunch of deliveries and then come back and load them back up and uh, go to sleep. So um, yeah, we like the ramp door also uh, we kind of changed the way we wanted to build this out. I think we're gonna build a wall right here and have a door pass through. And you can get cables that'll hold this thing up. This is a uh, spring assist 
to make the back door opening and closing extremely easy. You just use one finger. It's amazing how that works. But we can attach another fixed cable on here to hold it up uh, flat so we can use it as a back deck. And then in here we can store firewood and uh, you know tools and stuff like that and completely seal it off from the rest of the living area. And I think we're just gonna keep our bikes in the van to give us more uh, living space in here. But the plywood that comes with these things, sometimes some of them come with plywood, some of them come with OSB, some of them come with, I think it's called Drymax. It's like treated uh, particle board, basically. I think that's supposed to be the most waterproof. This plywood is like the second best. It's much better than particle board. That just absorbs water like crazy and then disintegrates. Um, it's unpainted. It's completely untreated. And I know that because they put in, they missed with the, with the screws in a few spots and a few spots had like holes and they filled it in real cheaply. They, they missed this spot, but they filled some of it in and then just sanded over it and it's just raw wood and it's raw wood on the back as well. So if we get a leak in here or uh, say we're in here and we're creating heat in here or we're cooking in here or something, creating a bunch of humidity and heat and it's cold outside, this aluminum is going to condensate like crazy and that is, uh, that's going to cause this wood to mold and that's a big problem. And one of the things I'm really kind of like, oh, why did you guys do that? They put this Luon in up here and uh, they do that to strengthen the roof because it's, uh, it's pretty thin. I think this roof is a different material than the aluminum. I think this is galvanized steel on this particular one. But they, they screwed in this Luon onto the ribs before they put the roof on. So to take this out and paint it, you have to, uh, you have to take the, the roof off. So that kind of sucks. Uh, is what it is. It's gonna, no matter what you get, if you get a schoolie or a box truck or whatever, it's going to be a lot of work, but that is an extra bit of work. You probably wouldn't have to do on anything else, remove the metal roof. So that is a pain, but once it's done, it'll be done right and it'll be, it'll be great. Another thing you want to watch out for, which I haven't seen too many people talk about, is I think it's called electrolysis. It's where steel and aluminum, uh, when they're touching, create a... Uh, a reaction together and they create corrosion so you can actually get a lot of rust just from the aluminum touching the steel so while I have that off I'm gonna make sure the underside of this is painted really really well it looks like it from this side but I'll crawl underneath and show you the bottom in a second you'll see they missed a few spots so I wouldn't be surprised if they missed a few spots on this as well so to make sure this is really well painted and uh, maybe even stick something else in there between the uh, aluminum and the steel just to make sure that that doesn't happen if this is in fact aluminum which it probably is and another thing is you can get one piece aluminum roofs those are on the expensive fancy ones that's definitely preferred because you're never going to get a leak in the middle this one is multiple pieces and they're they're like crimped together like this which is pretty interesting uh, i think i mentioned earlier that this company we bought it from which is a uh, uh what is the name of this thing continental cargo they guarantee these round roofs for lifetime as long as you don't drill through them which we're gonna so we're gonna avoid that warranty but they have enough faith in their product that they're willing to put a lifetime warranty on these roofs not leaking so that i thought was impressive and i think i also mentioned the vinos ones were only a one year and that's that's the main reason we didn't go with that otherwise i've seen another build on youtube where they had the uh they had the vinos and they, they walled it off and they put an ac unit in there and a trap door that they could open when the ac is on to vent all the hot humid air and they put some other things in there with the access doors i think a propane or something um and that's pretty cool so all these walls got to come out and the floor too uh there's a couple spots like right here there's like a lip which has actually gotten a lot better today yesterday it was a lot worse it was way worse yesterday wow it's almost like fine now oh here it's a little tall right here now but there's a big gap right here and uh yeah, this wood's just got to come up and get fully treated and to pull that up you got to pull the walls off which needs to happen anyway you can see kind of the sloppy job they did on here but the the basic frame of this thing is steel and this is a good one we got a 16 inch on center ribs all the way down and as well as the floor usually the walls i think are like 20 inch or something i could totally be wrong about that and the floors are usually 24. we got 16 so th this floor is extra strong so it'll hold a lot of weight and uh, it's good steel too. When I was drilling these things out, I had to drill out four holes for these wheel shocks for the motorcycles. It was tough. I broke, I broke a few drill bits getting through there. I had cheap ones, but still, it's, uh, it's tough steel. So it's good stuff. So there's gonna be uh, you know, quite a bit of work to do before we start building this thing out. You know, We gotta pull the walls off to insulate it anyway. 
I guess we could probably leave this up here and, uh, you know, put a vapor barrier over it and seal it in or something, but to prevent, mo do it when it's dry out or something in the desert, prevent moisture from getting in there. But we got the roof vent here and the, this roof vent leaks, you know, that's going to be a problem. We actually want to put a, uh, put an AC unit in here, a ceiling mounted one, and then the, the bathroom we want to put over here, the shower in here, so we'll put a roof vent up there for that, and the toilet over here, and a bunch of storage and stuff. So there's uh, there's quite a bit of work to, to be done. This is not something that's easy. I mean, I guess you could just throw some beds and a bed and a couple cabinets in here and call it a day. Plenty of people have done that, but you're gonna end up regretting it because you're gonna get mold and uh, leaks and stuff. So this back door, um, yeah, this piece of wood has to come off too. It is pretty good quality plywood though. Let me show you how easy this is. Look at this, one finger. Super, super easy. You always want to close these gently. You can see the back is, uh, you know, two pieces too. So we'll seal this up and get it all sealed up. And this one has some pretty heavy duty hinges and uh, Zerk fittings on all the hinges. So you can easily uh, keep those lubed up and make them last. And then on the bottom here, we've got these uh, jacks built in. You just pull this pin out. Let's see if I can do this without being super loud. You just pull this out and that drops down. And that'll be super nice when uh, when it's not hooked up. Ow! Dang it! To the van. Uh, another thing is some of the hardware is not stainless steel. Like, look, this has already got rust on it. This thing's brand new, man. It's already got corrosion on it. So I'm gonna have to sand this off and probably go over it with uh, some silicone or something. Let's uh, take a look at the underneath real quick. And I'll show you that. There's a bunch of people on the other side. Ugh. All right. So under here. You can see, hopefully, the lighting's okay. The wood is treated with something, but it's not very thick and they didn't do it very well. And uh, this coating that they put on the metal, they call it Z-Tech, I think. They missed in a lot of spots. And when we bought it, we told them, I'm not paying full price for this thing unless you guys uh, you know, crawl under there and clean off all the corrosion, all the surface rust and paint back over it. So I got their word that they did that and I actually trust them. It's uh, kind of rare that I trust uh, dealer of any kind with any kind of vehicle but i trusted them so hopefully they uh they held up to their end of the bargain there they definitely painted over it as far as like cleaning the rust off first i'm, I'm pretty sure they did so on this side um oh and another thing we got led lights on here and they missed on uh this side they missed with the silicone just a little bit so we got a little water in there so i'm waiting for this to dry out we got a couple more dry days ahead of us Hopefully that'll dry out all the way and I can put some more silicone in there. If not, we're heading down to San Diego and it'll be nice and dry there. I can do it there. So the kind of the last thing is uh, this door. It came with this RV style latch, which is really nice because you can open it and lock it from the inside. And it's got this, uh, this little whatever that style lock is. It's baiting me right now. Uh, but I didn't feel like this was enough to keep people out. So I installed this cam lock which I installed to go over the lock so it would be hard to pick and over the handle so you can't just pop it off. Uh, this isn't gonna really stop anyone, but it will slow them down. And of course, you wanna make sure that you lock this when you're inside of it so that nobody uh, comes and locks it on you and locks you in. That would be uh, pretty terrible. Let's, uh, let's close this like this. So that'll hold it close. And uh, as far as locks go, we got these bay lock locks. Basically what this is, is you just set this over the cam lock and then this pin goes through here and it'll go through those two holes and then you just push that button and it's locked. That's it. It just goes right through these two holes right here. So those are really nice. Uh, it prevents someone from easily getting a pry bar in there and just popping it off. And that's a, that's a nice thing to me. Um, these doors are pretty flimsy. This is just a really thin sheet of aluminum with this nice texture on it. And the outside is just a thin aluminum skin. And the inside is just uh, styrofoam. It's just styrofoam insulation. So very, very thin. Um, this one's got lights. It's got one there, one there. That's kind of nice. I don't think there's that much else I can say about this thing. I think it's a, just an awesome, I know it sounds like I'm kind of complaining about this thing, but I'm really not. No matter what you get, it's gonna be work to prep it and everything. You know, the attention to detail, like right here, you can see light through that gap. 
We got another one right there, that's gonna leak. But at least they put this uh, aluminum rail up here to prevent water from hitting that. Uh, another design, I guess, flaw is this piece of rubber right here. It's, it's kind of a pain to walk, step into here. You wanna step like that, but then you're pushing it down all the time. So you gotta learn how to step up like this. So I'll eventually put a step down there, like RV style. But I think that's pretty much it. Um, that kind of covers everything I know about these things. And, uh, you know, overall, this is a really, I, I think it's a really good quality one. We looked at them from, uh, this is from Trailer City in Portland, Oregon. I don't, I think it's a one, they only have it in Portland. They don't have it anywhere else. Um, we looked at, what is it, Interstate Cargo or Trailers USA or something? They sell the Interstate Cargo line ones. And those trailers were a little nicer. They had just a little bit more attention to detail and uh they were more expensive but the sales guy there was uh i'm almost positive he was on meth it he was just a nut dude and he was extremely pushy i couldn't stand it he was like what do i got to do to seal this deal today what do i got to do to get you to sign today i'm like i told you when we came in we're just looking around to see what is out there and see uh what we're getting into we're just looking today man like relax you know the guy was crazy he was like jumping around. he ran as fast as he could inside the cheaper uh one of the cheaper line of their trailers into the wall to show how weak it was and it's like dude you're a spaz man you need to chill out so i didn't appreciate that the other place we went to trailer usa their uh their salary they're not commissioned and they were much nicer they weren't pushy at all they just answered questions and they said well if you guys need anything come find us you know we'll answer any questions you got and they were cool so we went there even though the trailer wasn't quite as nice, the experience was a lot nicer. So that's neither here nor there. Uh, thank you so much for your guys' time. I think that uh, it's probably a pretty good look at at least this cargo trailer for somebody who's looking into them and uh, getting to know them. I'm far from an expert, but that's what I know. So thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. See you next time. Love yourself.